Man, I have to tell you, this movie messed me up. <laughs> <laughs> that man, right? No, no, no. The, you messed me up for real, for real. But the movie in general just kind of messed me up. And this is why. It messed me up because even though the word loose means light, it was very dark. But what was really messing me up is the fact that it was such a dark subject, but you <laughs> were giving that darkness with a smile on your face, and it was creeping me out. <laughs> what was that like for you to portray that type of character? Because that's different than some other stuff I've seen you do. Yes, it's usually a little bit more pure and innocent. <laughs> and he's like the illusion of innocence. Um, but he, but that's the weird thing. It's really not an illusion. He is just a 17-year-old kid. He's just very intelligent, and he knows what he wants, and he's kind of tired of the system telling him what he needs to be doing and the expectation of black excellence and all these other ideas being placed on him. He's like, you know, what, what is power and privilege and who has it and who doesn't have it and where's mine, you know? Kelvin, you, your trajectory thus far seems to be these characters who perfection is placed on them. Mm -hmm. On Luce, the perfection is placed on him that he's an excellent student, that he has to be what these adoptive parents want him to be. And in Monsters and Men, he was the first person in his family to possibly graduate from college. Mm -hmm. So there was that perfection placed on him with mm -hmm. that. So kudos to you on that. How close to this is your story? Well, you know, I was not a former child soldier, and I certainly have not engaged in anything <laughs> that it's suspected that Luce does in this movie. <laughs> Otherwise, know. <laughs> otherwise, my next interview is, you know, jail. <laughs> Coming my way very the soon. <laughs> exactly. The government rolls up in next and they're like, all right. Cuffs. Um, but I am an immigrant to this country. I was born in Nigeria. I moved here when I was 10. I moved to Arlington, Virginia. I was attracted. Familiar uh, with the area. I'm a graduate of Howard. Oh, all right. Oh, H-U. There you go. My okay, son. Okay, My sorry. mom took, I, I and my sisters took classes there. Okay. Because we lived in D.C. In, uh, for a few years as well. Mm -hmm. That sense of emotional and psychological dislocation that Luce is dealing with, being in this new environment, with those sense of expectations. Mm -hmm. I was also a debater and, you know, I also had expectations thrust on me of what you're supposed to represent and how you're supposed to be different from what the worst image of blackness is. You know, all those things were thrust on me. I struggled with the kinds of things Lou struggled with. So that was personal. And I think despite the differences in the, you know, some of the details of it, it's the emotional texture that stays consistent. And I know some of your experiences as well, where you have a familiarity with that emotional texture too. So I think we were all bringing, and so did Octavia. Mm. I think we were all bringing that to the table with this. I think this is the perfect film for right now, especially in light of what's happened the last couple of days with our government, with them storming people's homes mm. that are immigrants and literally dragging them out of their houses, dragging them out of their places of work. How do you think the release of Loose is going to, for both of you, how do you think that's going to affect, how this film is going to affect society knowing what we have going on right now? When the play was written, it was written during the Obama administration. So now we got a completely different, opposite end of the spectrum happening. So how do you think this is going to play when it hits? Oof. That's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Sorry, I had to ask No, you no, that. it's a big question, but it's an important question. I am anxious to see how it hits. To truth be told, I'm not sure how it's going to hit. You know, it's tricky because on one hand, we're in this heated moment and we're talking about immigration. We're talking about the way people are vilified. And you have this character who's incredibly complex, who is a mixture of the light and the dark. And he represents the best of what being an immigrant is and he represents the threat that an immigrant also presents. But the ultimate question isn't solely good or bad. I think the ultimate question should hinge on if we're going to invite people into this country and to be a part of the American community, should we not expect them to be human? Should we not expect them to contain the multitudes that all people contain? That's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. That's an right? excellent and, point. And, and negotiating that, I think, is going to be the challenge. The other component of it that I've thought a lot about also is what we're seeing now, which is a shift in power from one generation to another and a shift in definition of what this country is and also what liberalism is. And that's what you're seeing with, you know, Pelosi versus the squad, right? It's not that big of a difference between Harry and Luce. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. And it's that idea that you all had your time. Now it's our time. Mm -hmm. And we want to shape a new country and a new culture that isn't just professing values of inclusivity, but is living values of inclusivity. That isn't just celebrating symbols, but is actually willing to make the sacrifices necessary to create the culture that we live in. And I think that's at the core of the 
disagreement between Luce and Harriet, and it's also at the core of a lot of the conversations we're having in this country. And it's important for us to be cognizant of that, to be able to fully have that conversation. And that's what I hope this story provides, an opportunity for people to have more of those conversations. What the answer is going to be, I don't know, the movie doesn't know, but it's up to us to figure that out. Absolutely. Let's talk about white privilege for a second, Hmm. because that's real Mm -hmm. in life in general, and it's definitely real within the confines of this picture. There's part of me that felt like they really, at the core, thought they were doing the right thing. And then then there's that moment where they both realize that maybe they didn't do the right thing. And then there's that shift with the dad and with the mom, where the dad is like, I can't go along with this. But the mom is like, but this is my son. I don't care where he came Mm -hmm. from. I don't care what he did. I don't care what he's going to do. He's my son regardless. How do you think white privilege in America plays into that thing? Because it was really real and it was really hardcore. And it was the fact that white people feel like they can just do whatever with no consequences attached to it. Hmm. Y'all like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you want to take that first? <laughs> Y'all looked at me, and Kelly's like, oh, dang, well, I got to go first. Why are you, why are you asking me these deep questions? <laughs> no, I mean, that's what we're here for. That's what, the, that's what the movie's about, so. Yeah. You want to sing this time now, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you just want to break out into a song, right? <laughs> Sunshine of my life or something like that. <laughs> you hit the nail on the head when yeah. you said sometimes it feels like these kinds of people don't have to deal with the same consequences uh, as everybody else. And what I think is fascinating about the trajectory of both of these characters in the movie, at the end of the day, the conversation that they're having will always exist on a conceptual level for them. Well, what if this happens to our black son? What if that happens to our black son? But have never having lived that experience or having dealt with the fact that if you are of a certain group and you make one mistake, you have one strike, against you, you're out. Absolutely. It's not something that they can ever fully appreciate. And that's why they can equivocate so much about what they believe. Harriet ain't going to equivocate. Harriet's like, like, no, this is the truth (laughs) of it. And because she's lived it. And ultimately, to go back to your question, that is what white privilege is. Not having to make that kind of stark choice between the black and white, but to be able to assume that you can make these choices and decisions or or have these things happen to you and there's going to be a spectrum of consequences to it. You know, I read so many stories of things that happen, right? Things that happen to some of the Luce's character and you hear, you know, well, the kid got a light slap on the wrist or, you know, they try to rationalize what it was. Well, you know, that shooting, it was just a lone gunman. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a Muslim terrorist or it wasn't uh, another, you know, savage inner city young black youth. So there's ways things can exist on an intellectual, uncertain, open to interpretation plane. Mm -hmm. And the privilege is not having to fall into one of these boxes. Mm -hmm. But the reality for those of us who live outside of that privilege is not only will you fall into those one of those boxes, you might never get out of it again. Mm. Mm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We're like, "Mm." Let's talk about your relationship with Harriet, because Harriet was always looking at you with one eye open. (laughs) Harriet never, ever really gave you the benefit of the doubt. And what I really want to talk to you about is that very last scene that you have with her where you walk into the house and you see the writing on the glass that you put there, but you were trying to act like, you know. (laughs) You 100% 100 certain he put it there? Um, no, I'm not. That's what I'm saying. The film messed me up. <laughs> I'm not 100% certain about nothing. No. <laughs> With this movie, like there's some movies where it's really cut and dry and you're like, okay, this happened. Let me tell you something. This movie messed me up. I didn't know. It's like I said when I reviewed this. This is one of those films that it leaves your head swirling way after the credits have rolled. You're still thinking about it. Our yeah. heads are still swirling and we were involved with making it. <laughs> no, we were, just, we were just talking about really? it, you know? Because every time you think about an action a character takes or the result of a situation and you take a step out of your perspective and think about the counteraction, then it becomes messier. And mm-hmm. that's what I think was powerful for all of us about wanting to tell the story. Part of What the movie is trying to get at is this idea that there's more than one side to every story. Mm -hmm. There's more than one truth to every person. This is true. And when you put people in boxes, you limit their human potential. Mm. I want to go back to Harriet one more time. Yeah. (laughs) Did either one of you 
have a teacher like a Harriet, that one te- there's always that one teacher, that one coach, that one somebody in that school situation that is always got one eye open and has always got one eyebrow raised as something that anybody is doing. Did either one of you ever experience somebody like that? I, I had a teacher like that. I grew up in the South. I, went, I grew up in New Orleans and I went to a private school. And when I went there, it was like, it was a complete culture shock. It was just like, it was like me and like five other black people. <laughs> and the first moment I got there, the first question, they were just like, what do your parents do? Why? Does it matter? And Ooh. they were just like, we don't say yeah, we say yes. Oh, no. And it was just like, and, and one of my advisors was like, the, you know, the, the, what's good for Kelvin, C's are good for Kelvin. And there was this immediate <laughs> like, whoa, like y'all see me very differently than I've ever had to even think of myself. So now I have to adjust. But then there was the one black teacher in the school. And she was like, if you want to survive, so you need to do this, and you need to do this, and you need to do this. And she would constantly just be like, why did you do that? And, and we had other kids, the inner city kids that you know, had suffered from Hurricane Katrina to try to get in school because they had to meet their black quota. It was this like adjustment always. And I, I suddenly became like the poster boy for music. You had the code switch, <laughs> Yeah, right? I had the code switch. And so then I started seeing myself be completely different. And then my parents were just like, who are you? And I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. So it's, I, we've all have those figures. I mean, I guess, well, at least I did in my life, where you want to appease them and you want them to see you as as great because you want to feel good about yourself you want to feel like you did it you want to feel like you almost want to be the token at a certain point until you realize that being the token is not that fun after a while mm-hmm. how about you Jean? you know i never had any particular teacher i think the closest experience of that was my parents and that same eye on you cannot trust the world around you to do the best for you expect the best for you to provide the best for you a black teacher may have or a black parent may have I felt that through my parents. It's tough because on one hand, you want to be, as Lou says, like any other student, like any other kid, have access to the full spectrum of humanity to make mistakes, to to live your life, to deal with challenges and grow up. But on the other hand, you can't dismiss the message of those who are coming before you, even though they grew up in a different time. They know that the world out there, and that's what Harriet is saying, ain't going to just listen to you say, well, I just want to have full access to the human experience or, or the human spectrum. They expect the worst of you at times because of how you dress or how you talk or who they think you are. And then once they put you back in that box and decide that's who you are, you're done. You're dismissed. I think part of what this movie is trying to ask is why do we feel the need to put certain people in boxes? Mm -hmm. And can we, as a society, learn to see all people as human, not just the best of them or the worst of them? I love that. I think that's a great place to stop. Because that was a fabulous quote. I'm so excited. (laughs)